Hello everyone, my name is Ark Bean, and in today's episode, we're going to be cleaning up the front yard. Some front yard beautification action going on. So, without any explanation whatsoever, let's just jump into it. The first thing we're going to do is clear out this podzol. Podzol is a good block. I like podzol, just not right there. And voila, all done. Look at that, we're 10 seconds into the video and we've already got one of our tasks done. That's like record time. Normally I talk too much. Alright, the second task is going to be to fix up this lake right here. I do like this lake and it's kind of interesting because it's, actually, it's water level is one block lower than the world water level. Uh, sort of similar to that new cave updates and stuff. However, it looks kind of fried. As you can see, I put some dirt over here. Because my initial plan was to cover it up because I didn't like the way it looked. And it was in the way. It prevented me from walking around my garden. But I ran out of dirt. But now that we've just dug up all that puzzle, we have plenty of resources to go ahead and just fill this in. And here we are. We've got all that material in the form of puzzle and a bit of dirt that just was sticking out there removed and we filled in the lake and the creeper hole so now we've got a better palette to work with here now as you guys probably saw uh the title of this episode is better than hgtv now what is hgtv many of you guys may know it's a pretty sure it's a cable channel it stands for home and garden television so on there you have all kinds of shows and some of the i guess more popular ones are basically house makeovers stuff like that but we're doing a front yard makeover and we're going to do it better than hgtv could i'm just saying that right now it's going to be better one of the first things i want to add is sort of a oven grill area back here as of right now we just have a pile of cows and a cave overhang thing and i just want to make it seem a bit more functional even though we obviously have furnaces and smokers inside uh, it'll just complete the area, make it feel more like it's supposed to be here. So we're going to come in here. And we're going to go ahead and mine some of this out. Just so we have a little space to work here. Going to need an area about four blocks wide. And I think I have some stone cooking up in here, making it regular stone again. Oh, I had cobblestone cooking up. Yep, here we go. Now we can... Fill in that little gap back here. Okay, that's three. We need one more here. And probably go up one more block. Okay, so right here in the middle, I'm going to throw down these two as sort of our ground level of our furnace. And I'm going to build up a couple blocks here. Mine out these two. Drop our furnaces in. You could put them up front here, and that would probably look okay, but this just adds a little depth. Makes everything come alive more. I'm going to throw our chimney up top here, and then add some shape to it with these stairs. Got this here. Oops. Got to get a better angle here. And there. So we've got our our main cooking area here with the smokers that'll actually work and just a little extra shell around it with a furnace out of the top or a, not a furnace a chimney out of the top to make everything look a little nicer so we can take some of these random torches down and these ones too careful not to hit the cows And we can throw these on either side here. And then if we really wanted to go the whole mile, we'll add a countertop sort of right here, which I think I will do. Just going to use some of these trap doors like so. Fold that one down. Very nice. And then we can add things on top of here for instance item frames with uh, items in them or a flower pot already so we've got our counter area done we've got our meat that's going to be thrown in there and uh 
knife if you can use your imagination that you're going to use to cut up the meat and it's just, just little details like these that really sell the whole area i mean anyone can really build a basic furnace but by adding the stair blocks to give it some shape and areas like or little details like this really make it come alive the next thing we're going to do is add a floor here uh, that way we're not walking on the grass it'll probably be something similar to this um, something to give it like a tiled appearance because you know it's a outdoor area we're obviously not having carpet outside so um, yeah we'll get right back to that for the floor I'm gonna show you guys a texture that I actually picked up from other youtubers uh, this is not my idea but I think it's pretty cool it's regular old stone mixed in with polished andesite it really makes the floor look nice and worn so the main areas that we a person would be standing would be for instance along the counter here and at and at right at here at the furnace like in the corners they wouldn't be as worn of an area obviously we're gonna have to walk over there so the majority of this will be stone And then things really start to look nice when you add in the polished andesite. So it makes it look like this used to be a tiled floor. Looks like I'm going to need to grab some more. But you can start to, start to see it coming together. It looks like it used to be a tiled floor, but over time, some of the tiles edges sort of got worn down. And it just looks like an old, well-used floor. So I'm going to grab some more polished andesite, and I'll show you guys the final product and there you have it i'd say this area is just about done we've got our nice weathered floor i added in this table afterwards which is some pistons that have been extended and we have our cooked food from our brand new oven there are three plates for me and my friends anyways uh it's these little details like i said earlier guys that really sell the world and make it look all that much better so let's add some more details to the garden so right along here, we're just going to throw up a few pieces of fence. You can, if you want, uh, go all the way on every single block around it. However, I think that makes it look a little bit too robotic, not very natural. So like right here, I'm going to leave a gap. Put one of those guys in there. Uh, put one there. Leave another little gap here. Another gap. Might as well just have one fence post there. And just continue uh, sort of broken pattern all the way around so once we've got our fence in place now we you might want to add some i don't know i'm going to call them studs so once you've selected the material you're going to want to use for these studs right here i'd say for instance is a common entrance I'm coming back from wherever i'm going over there and if i'm headed straight to the garden i'm going to use either this gap here or this one so let's just use this gap for instance and we're going to knock out this fence post and put a, now let's not do too tall, just one block right there. Just to make it look like there at one point was maybe a more sturdy structure there. Same thing right here. I'm going to go ahead and grab that. Throw one right there. And right here. You're generally going to want to put them on the ends of your rows of fences. Uh, it doesn't always look the best to put them in the middle. Once you've got your studs in place, you may want to put a fence post on top just like that. And by itself, it doesn't look the greatest, but when you put a torch on top, not only does it light up the area, but things start to make a bit more sense here. There wouldn't be just a fence post on top of a log for no reason now, would there? With the torches lighting up your garden, your garden will actually grow faster. As if, that is, if you're awake at night. Let me rephrase that. It won't grow faster, but uh, its growing time will be, its growing period will be longer. So normally, uh, it'll only grow during the day since the sun's out, but with the torches, the light level will be increased right around the crops, and they'll grow faster. So as you guys can see here, even the addition of a sort of broken up uh, fence, even though it is all the same wood, and you guys can always add more of your own creative ideas to this, but I'm just going to keep it basic for today. Um, 
it does make the garden seem more like the garden at least in my opinion you guys might think different and if you hate it let me know down in the comments but uh for now we're just going to leave it like this and move on to the next section which will be this path right here i ultimately want to have a uh, sort of a little boat dock there right next to our friend the dark oak boat uh we want it would be right there so we want a path to come here and later maybe this episode maybe not we'll see what we have time for we'll add a barn right there so i want the path to come out and sort of y off here sort of split off into two directions um but we're gonna have to update the path that is currently over there because i don't think that the grass path block uh, mixed in with the regular glass, grass blocks is going to look very good all the way down. So what we'll probably do is, is at each location, the barn, the dock, and the house will make that sort of a, for lack of better words, a buffer path. We'll have more solid blocks, make it look like a road was built here. And then in the middle area, we can have more of the grass path blocks because the grass has been downtrodden by lots of people's uh, footfalls so starting right here at the entrance to our house we're just going to take i've chosen stone bricks and we're just going to sort of coat the ground here just like where the old ground was i've already ripped out the old stuff but we still need somewhere to walk here so we're going to go ahead and use this we will come back through later and add um, cracked stone bricks which I have cooking in that furnace right there that'll add more texture to this and right about here is where we want the central point so if this block here, let's just mark it right here is where we want the Y to begin so we want the path about here to curve off to the barn and the other one to continue straight to the water since our stone bricks have reached about halfway probably actually looks like a little over halfway to our y point we can now start transitioning back to our dirt blocks so if we gonna take this one out here and then we can add some more stone but just have it a little bit more separate here just like that and one more there now we'll come back through here and we can also add gravel gravel is a good transition block between stone and the dirt since gravel is sort of a dirty block but it's great so if we have this like so and then bring our shovel in here and get some grass path going let's see let's throw a couple here since we like to go to the garden very good and since this is the Y point we get a lot of traffic so there's not going to really be much grass you know might as well take that out In order to make a path look more natural, you're not going to want perfectly straight lines like you saw before when this was grass. It was a perfectly 45 degree angle of grass and path, but by taking this one out, it seems a bit more natural. Now I think we're going to add some dirt down here, so we're not going to go all the way down. But hopefully some of the cracked stone bricks should be done, and I can show you what we're going to do with those. So once again, cracked stone bricks are going to be a more broken block, sort of like gravel. So we're not going to have as many cracked bricks up right near our house where the path is still sturdy. But we're going to have more cracked bricks down here. So if we break out a couple of these, maybe under the fence. And maybe right in front of the portal. Gets a lot of wear. We could just put in our cracked bricks. Oops. And there you go. Things are already starting to look a bit more natural. As you can see here, I've filled in some of the dirt that we took out earlier. 
Uh, it seems kind of counterintuitive, but earlier it was Podzol, but this is where we're going to be building our barn. Now, we're not going to build the entire barn this episode, uh, but we can lay out the area we want it. Um, one more note is, as you can see, as I've shown you earlier, uh, we used a more solid block near the entrance to our house. However, near the entrance to a barn, we're not going to do a more solid block. We're just going to continue the grass path around here at least in my mind it doesn't seem quite natural to have a hard block like stone bricks right where animals are going to be walking animals of course can walk on asphalt bricks whatever but it just doesn't seem very farm like in a lot of farms animals are mostly walking on grass and dirt so that's what we're going to keep it however out here by where we're going to put our dock we will once again use the same method we've used before just mirrored the other way. We're going to have grass path and stone. Alrighty guys, we got a pretty good path going here. We have our original uh, sturdy path from our house. We have our more dirty path from the broken end of our sturdy path all the way to the barn. And I am going to adjust uh, that bit of grass there to make it more smooth. But it does go out to our, once again, sturdy path out by where our boat dock is going to be, which is our next project. Now, I've been using spruce wood a lot up until now, a lot with the house, especially the floor and the fence here. And we use spruce um, trap doors over there. But right now, we're going to switch it up. We're going to use oak from our one oak tree that used to be right there. And we can replace that. Anyways, we're going to use mostly slabs here. And it's going to be a really basic dock. We're literally just going to have two, it's going to be two blocks wide. This is going to jut out into the water here. Say maybe, let's give it one more. Just something super simple like that so we can get our, our clapped out yacht over here. And park it right alongside here. And we can get out, get onto the dry land without having to swim. And it just looks nice. So we're going to go ahead and take our spruce logs here. Now they don't have to be spruce, but they're what I have. And we're going to have these as the pylons. Which this actually looks really ugly. Quick adjustment time. Alrighty, our quick adjustment was just to make it one block wider. That way we have... A good gap in the middle and we can take another slab here just put those right there and then we can grab our stone bricks and continue the path up to the dock that way everything just comes together and then we can add a couple more details here one of the things I like to add to my docks is right here near the entrance is just a taller, oops, let's see, there we go, a taller uh, light post. So if we bring it up one more block, we can bring it over one. So you knock this one out. And just hang a lantern right there. Just gives the place some light. And makes it look more than just look like more than just a flat platform. It's not the greatest design. In fact, I'm gonna move this out here. There we go. It's not the most fancy light post, but I mean, from a distance, it can be perceived as cool. And we can go get our power yacht here. Park it right upside here. Grab our crafting table and get an aerial view. It's one of the things I do all the time when I'm doing stuff that I try to make look good. Is I either stack up some dirt, scaffolding, or I just come on top of the hill and I take a peek. So, things are starting to come together. Everything looks a little flat right now, but we're going to add some depth to it here in just a second. The first way we can add some depth is with stone buttons. We can put them here on the gravel or just on the path in general. 
not too many so that way it looks overcrowded but they look like rocks on the path just adds a shadow that can be cast and so it doesn't look like someone just put a 2d picture you can't put a rock on the grass path here unfortunately but let's grab another aerial view And the path is already looking more alive than it was earlier. Now, one other thing we can do is... First, jump down here. One other thing we can do is grab some bone meal from inside the house here. And add the grass back onto the sides of the path. In addition to the flowers and grass, we can add some leaves here. These are just oak can be whatever you want and they don't have to be in any specific pattern I don't recommend making them two blocks tall but these do add some depth here make it seem more like a border on the side of the road which is not entirely what we're after but some definition is good it can be difficult to get these to look right, I guess I'll, I'll experiment with that and see if it looks good too tall. I do have a whole bunch. I just pretty much blasted that pair of shears down in my hotbar. Have some piled up here against the side of the building, which will be there. And once again, process of trial and error here. I'm going to get a quick aerial view. Yep, things are starting to look better. The shadows are sort of weird rendering there, but things are looking good. Maybe add some more down by the dock. But yeah, things are starting to come to life here. It is hard to picture a path, uh, for me, at least for me, um, when there's not a whole lot of buildings here. If the barn was there and if there was something else going on here, things might seem a little bit more complete. Alrighty, so the last thing we are going to do today before we call it a day on the episode is going to extend this path out a little bit and have a little bit of path coming off of our cookout patio over here. Now for this, we might want to add some dirt here just so we have a little bit of extra space and hopefully grass will grow there. And take out this grass and the flower and just throw a couple of these down. Don't have to go too crazy. There's that and that. And there we go. And down here. And there's that. Let's take uh let's take this one out and replace it with dirt so that way grass will grow back there. And there you have it guys. We've got a decent path connecting our furnace area with the rest of our pathway. Alrighty guys, as you can see here, we have done pretty much everything we have set out to do today. We accomplished quite a few little tasks, and including my favorite one, which is right back there the furnace and cookout area I, th I really like the way that one turned out but before we call it a day for this episode i'd like to explain to you guys how i know that my front yard is better than what hgtv can do well the logic is simple if you were to watch an episode of pretty much any show on hgtv at the end of the episode when the host of the show reveals the finished product whether it's a home or a garden to the owner of the home or garden, the owner usually breaks down into tears. And as far as I'm concerned, tears are usually a sign of either pain or grief and sorrow. And while you may not 100% like all the decorations I put in my front yard, I'm pretty sure that they don't inspire pain and sorrow. And it is by this category that I have placed my front yard above the work that HGTV has done thus far. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.